welcome to The Sound of Design with Mark and Dan and Brian. Hey! Hey! Hi. That's the excitement. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> that is it. Uh, thank you very much for uh, joining us today. We really do uh, appreciate it. We have our special, gra- special guest, uh, Ryan Phelps with uh, Sonance, has graciously agreed to uh, make the trip out, hang out with us, and uh, we're very, very, very excited about that. Um, we're going to talk uh, a little bit about uh, some of his background. We'll get into uh, some things uh, regarding uh, Sonance. Obviously, they do a ton, a ton. And so uh, we might lean more towards, uh, you know, theaters. We might get into who some distributed audio. We might talk a little bit about uh, design in general. Um, you guys are huge, huge, I know, into uh, design focus. And uh, that's really uh, just changed my approach, quite honestly, about the way that I approach a space and how I think about a space and why I think about a space. And uh, so hopefully we can get into some of that. Good. Yeah, Hopefully. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, why don't, uh, to start it off, uh, Ryan, tell me a little bit about yourself and uh, kind of where you came from and how you got into the audio and uh, video industry, and um, and we'll take it from there. Cool. Um, so obviously uh, I've spent the last six going into seven years with, uh, with Sonance. Um, I got my start... Uh, at a Best Buy store uh, almost 20 years ago, looking for, you know, kind of a beer money job, uh, bar tab, <laughs> bar tab job uh, while I was going to school and um, happened upon that particular department when I got started and, uh, you know, really loved, kind of loved this stuff that the benefit I had timing wise was uh, it was shortly inside of a year, at less, well less than a year uh, that I got started. Um Best Buy had expanded the Magnolia brand into Texas. And okay. so cool. I had the opportunity to dive into, into that, um, you know, from a sales capacity, um, went through, you know, wave training. I remember the first, the first demo, real art of the demo I ever got was um, on a pair of Vienna acoustic Mozarts with a primary two channel stack. Yeah, man. And, and it was, uh, <laughs> it was, it was Michael Buble. <laughs> Who I'd never heard of sure. at the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I had no. Yeah, I, yeah, I listened to music like anybody else, but wasn't nearly as eclectic as I am <laughs> sure. today, for sure. Um, but I, man, I got that demo, and I was like, "This is the best <laughs> kind of music, right?" And again, <laughs> from a genre that just you know, like a neo big band, right? Yeah, and exactly. It was yep. Completely. Um, just completely contrary to what I was into at the time. And so that really was what struck a chord. Um, I was like, this, this could be really, really fun to do. Um, and so from, from there it was a host of different gigs and different levels of exposure and, um, the opportunity to, you know, ultimately travel a little bit around that enterprise, help get, you know, uh, a bunch of different markets opened in, in different capacities and, um, you know, grew that into, to what became the, the original, you know, design center concept and, um, store within a store concept. And, um, you know, I, I think it was in a transitional time where I, I got to know a handful of folks that had come from the, the legacy side of, of that company's, um, you know, growth and, um, was also kind of in that, that, you know, really accelerated range, um, you know, really around, uh, you know, the, the turn of the last decade. And so, um, it, very unique timing. Um, I was fortunate to have been as young as I was to have some of the positions I had. I, I think I was at the right place, right time. And, you know, obviously yep. showed some, mm-hmm. some passion for it. And so yeah. there, I know a lot of guys have that right place, right time. Like you can do all the things right and it doesn't always work out. And yep. so, but then again, there's always a guy that happened to be there and <laughs> and got the shot and and then there you go. So uh, that's awesome, man. That's awesome. So um, uh, we know you rep Sonance, obviously. Um, what uh, what took you from kind of the that uh, the the Best Buy world over into the Sonance world uh, specifically? Because you ha- obviously had a lot of choices. You probably could have gone a bunch of different places. <laughs> Uh, so like, yeah, what, 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 what's, what, what's unique about, uh, the, the draw to Sonance? You know, I, th- I think, um, 
that that was a newer relationship toward the end of my career um, with between the with between Best Buy and Sonance. Um, you know, really, that was it was the last few years. Um, that was a newer relationship, but um, culturally speaking, uh, it was it's a really cool place um, to to be. Um, I thought I understood it. I really thought I understood the message. I really thought I understood the cultural aspect. I really thought I understood the innovative side when I was outside the house. Um, you know, I took a two year ish hiatus, uh, from the industry. Um, quite frankly, I'd, I'd kind of gone a different direction. Um, when I left uh, the Magnolia world in, in 2015 and I um, had a couple years off doing some other stuff and, um, you know, got a call and, you know, right again, right, right, right place, right, right, right time, right, well, you, know, I had a bad day. Um, you know, doing what I was doing. And, um, it just, yeah, had a bad day that day and, um, happened to get a phone call that evening and is, Hey, you know, what do you think about this? We're looking for somebody. Do you know anybody? What are you doing? And, uh, <laughs> I said, man, I had a terrible day. Oh, okay. Yeah. Do you want to fly out here and talk a little bit? Mm-hmm. Sure. So, um, That's awesome. You know, it, it was uh, again <laughs> right place, right time, um, and and you know it drug me out of what I thought was my early adulthood AV retirement, and yeah. uh, <laughs> kind of brought me back. Which I, you know, it's funny, man. Now that I've had a chance to see a lot more of the country and get deeper into the industry, man, there's so many. There's so many of those stories with so many different people at different companies. I mean, this this entire industry is riddled with incestuous relationships of somebody that worked here and now they work here and they work here. Yeah, but and I think it's I think it's important to know that at the end of the day, everybody's kind of pulling the pulling the sled in the same direction, um, more or less. Um, we may find different ways to do it, but you know, we we you know like the aspect of selling. We like the aspect of you know the toys we get to play with that we get to make and then, yeah, yeah. you know, see them come to life and, you know, the, the reaction of the folks that, you know, end up being the end users with them. So it's, it's, it's fun, man. I mean, it's kind of hard to get away from because <laughs> it's a lot of fun to do. Yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure. Well, it's funny you mentioned the incestuous relationship concept because it's like, I'm reminded of Metallica and Ozzy Osbourne a couple years ago, they did this thing where they swapped bass players and it's like the rock and roll industry is its own world. And I think there's a lot of truth to that. I think most people could probably say like, well, in our world, like this is how it works. And so, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it kind of transcends uh, just what it is that we do. I think most most folks are probably in that bucket. So, yeah, but for sure. Just speaks volumes to how to, to the fact that it's it's fun, like no matter we all have bad days, there's there, there's factors that, you know, can can impact um, how each of us goes through our respective day to day in the roles that we have within the bigger industry. Right. Um, but like we were talking about even earlier, man, at the beginning of the day or at the end of the day, like we're selling toys, man. Yep. Like, yep. It's, it can't be <laughs> that bad yep. if you get to play with stuff. You get paid to listen to music half the time. That's a great way to make a living. So absolutely. Yeah. 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 And, as far as Sonance goes, like I, I've got to go visit. I've been there twice actually, and you know, you talk about culture. Like, really, that's one of my favorite things about your company is that you know, you and I have become really good friends over the years because of the culture that's that I think is built from the ground up at your company. So, is that kind of one of the reasons that you were drawn that direction? Yeah, well, like I said earlier, I. I don't think I appreciated it as much, um, like early on, Mm -hmm. um, because to, you know, particularly coming from the world that, you know, you guys are in today, right? Like there's a ton of options where you got multiple brands with multiple stories and everybody's kind of got the niche they're trying to fill. And, you know, it's, it's a lot to juggle, right? I mean, it's, Mm -hmm. you've, you know, particularly, um, when you're, you're trying to, take care of the customers that you've got, sell the myriad of different products you have. I mean, it's, it's kind of hard to gravitate one direction or other. You kind of have to wear all those hats. And so just the balls in the air a lot. And, you know, for us, I think the, the message 
was always there, right? I mean, I've, I've heard it even in past episodes, you guys talk about, you ask, you ask the question, right? How do you want your sound to look? Which, yep. you know, is a great, it, it was a great conversation starter to help somebody that's trying to get into it think a little bit deeper about why they're spending the money they're about to spend or why they would even ask you to, to be a part of that. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, so in, in that regard, I, I think I, I got it kind of, um, you know, when I was in the house with you guys, um, but it really wasn't until, you know, I had a little bit of time in, in, you know, on, on this side of the counter to really understand and appreciate how people first the organization is. Mm -hmm. Um, it, it's, it's again, man, like just, just blessed have been the right, right place, right time. And, um, you know, willing to, to, to jump in. And, um, yeah, the flip side of that is when you get that, it makes it not only incredibly difficult to leave. It's very rare that, that somebody does, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, you know, with us, um, you know, we're growing, um, pretty aggressively. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and, uh, but it also makes you want to work even harder, um, because you appreciate it. Right. And I think mm -hmm. finding the right, the right folks to put on the bus and then finding the right seats for them is, you know, is really what, um, that culture, you know, or what drives that culture. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, again, I'm grateful to be a part of it and, um, you know, hope to continue to do so for, for a very long time, just because it's, it just really is. It's a, it's a fun place to work with, you know, cool stuff that we get to do. And, um, we do get to meet, you know, different folks, um, you know, from all walks of life and, and build relationships. We've got some common ground. We can at least start the conversation with, mm -hmm. um, but, um, you know, let, let us to literally how we're sitting here today. So yeah, absolutely. Cool. Absolutely. So you mentioned, uh, the, uh, how do you want your sound to look? And, uh, that's probably a good jumping off point because as most folks, uh, approach the audio industry, I think there is a, uh, kind of an inherent um uh, we'll just say it this way there's an unconscious bias right where you're saying i need the biggest speakers i can get i need to have wires everywhere i need to have you know big amplifiers and things along those lines and it's kind of like this carryover from a hi-fi industry going back into the 60s and 70s and 80s right and so there's this sort of uh image in people's minds i think where they you know hear words like av and technology and things like that and they just sort of have this you know preconceived notion this is what it is and uh when you guys introduced that concept to us it was like the watershed moment like oh my goodness there's a different way that you should probably <laughs> think about what it is that you're doing um and so could you talk us through a little bit about kind of that ethos and where it came from and um, kind of what has led you guys to go down the path you have. Yeah, I think um, you know, if you talk to anybody that's been tenured at the company, um, you know, a lot of our executive team has been there knocking on the door 20 years, right? Um, and, and some of those guys even came out of spaces and worked previously for companies like Lutron, right, which is heavily focused on it. But even before that, um, before that group, from Scott and Jeff up, it, you know, it, it was always uh, around design, right? And part of that was the environment that they chose to open their business in, um, in Southern California. Yep. Um, the timing, right? <laughs> timing is so important. <laughs> right? and all of this. And, um, you know, it was, it, it, it was at a time where the hi-fi space at that point was, you know, 15 years old. Right. right? Stereo mm -hmm. was about 15 years old. And so... Um, finding ways to innovate in there and, and being able to, to deliver, um, what you'd expect to get from, or at least in theory, be able to deliver what you'd expect to get from that, that hi-fi setup, but in more places, right? How do you replicate that and put it in places, um, that you traditionally wouldn't, right? And how do you stick speakers in places that, you know, they don't belong. And, um, you know, they'll even tell you, I mean, it's not, they weren't the first guys to do that, right? People have been trying to stick speakers in places that didn't belong since the genesis of the technology. Um, but what they figured out was there's a mass market for it. And if we can come up with something that was designed to do that, um, it'd probably be a pretty good idea. And, you know, um, surprise, surprise, right, 40 years <laughs> later, right. We just celebrated our 40th anniversary this year at Cedia and, uh, 
you know, uh, of the creation of the Sonance One and the the original speaker. It's and it's it's cool to see that we continue to innovate that way. And I think most of the folks, again, tenured folks that you talk to, if you ask bluntly, what it, you know, we work for a design company that happens to make speakers and um, you know I, iPad accessories and. Um, all the, the myriad of different innovations we've got, it you know, it, it stems from that. And ironically, I think in today's world, um, it's never been more prevalent, right? I mean, the way homes are designed, the way that um, depending on your geography, there's stylistic elements of both the, the architecture in conjunction with the lighting and the decor um, that are always changing, right? They're, they're very fluid. Um, you know, I don't live on either coast. So we're about 10 years behind uh, sure. <laughs> technically for what like, the newest trend is, but, uh, um, even still, you know, it's, it's trying to, to deliver and create a little bit of that magic, you know, for what you get from, from listening, um, sometimes in places that aren't the most conducive, um, and the ability to, to manipulate that and to innovate, not just, the stuff, like not just the, the, this speaker with this material. I mean, there's, there's so many different elements of, of math and physics that go into it and the way that you read the response from certain materials and how you design and, um, you know, build the, the guts of a speaker to, um, account for all those different variables and, um, the measurement tools that are involved in that. And then not to mention once you develop something that delivers, finding f- new and innovating formats to put that, that in. Yeah. 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 Cause you know, at the end of the day, you're just, you're trying to recreate right and left, but in a lot of places. And I think what we want to deliver in you know, our, our, um, you know, message moving forward is life is better with music. Um, and, and it incorporates everywhere, right? I mean, you, you see it today where people are addicted to media. Um, mm-hmm. yeah, it's instant gratification, Fidelity's not at the top of the list for the mass consumer. That's not to say that we don't believe in that. It's just it's the way that people buy today, right? So, yep. um, you guys know better than anybody. You're, you know, you're you're still nose Fight, and toes. Yeah, fighting with people over, yeah. you know, yep. are you going to use an over the ear headphone? Are you going to use those AirPods? And not to knock the AirPod, but just to say, like that is probably not the uh, definition of hi-fi or the best audio experience out there Mm -hmm. and it wasn't supposed to be either like in apple's defense to your point the whole world is sort of shifted back into a mono style of listening right and so there's this concept i think of our phones being that listening place and stereo is sort of like maybe that only that first step up right Mm -hmm. and Yeah, to a degree. Uh, so, I th- yes, it, it, short yes. Um, ironically, like the the iPod, I would say is probably the most influential invention in the last hundred years. I don't right? disagree with that. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Just in terms of how it, like what what left from it. it's not that everybody gravitated to music per se, but. You think about how many the, the genesis of the phone, right? Shortly thereafter, yep. The ability to take whatever single track you wanted to listen to and have instant gratification to listen to that over and over and over again. We had a little bit of that with CD, right? It was faster to hit back than it was to rewind the tape. Yep. yep. Um, <laughs> you know what I mean? Or, or move the needle yep. um, to, to listen to the same song. And so what you found was people would listen you know, to an album, like a ballad. Right. And that's how so much of that was written. And that's where so much of that artistry is. And Mm -hmm. you see it in the industry today. I mean, the music industry today is, you know, it's, it's singles, right. It's very rare that uh, you'll see it in the indie world a little bit. Right. But any of the Mm -hmm. mainstream pop hits or it's how fast can we crank singles? And, um, and, and, you know, it's different, but people like that. Right. And that's, Mm -hmm. we're, we're conditioned to it. So whether we agree with it or not is, kind of academic at this point it's yep well and and if you go back and look at the history right so you go to the 40s into the 50s singles were a big deal sure right and so i think we're just 
you know, history has a way of repeating itself. <laughs> and it goes in <laughs> waves and cycles. And you see that with, you know, the way people would do, uh, you know, different styles, like from shoes and, you know, dress and all that kind of stuff, hairstyles, all those kinds of things. And we see that, you know, you know, cyclical pattern. But I agree with you going back to the iPad just for or iPod, excuse me, just for a split second, because it was such an inward focus. You know, there's a big part of. Uh, kind of this reoccurring theme that we kind of always tend to go back to, which is the correct expression of selfishness. Like we're always doing this inward focus. And so we're leading our design conversations around the customer saying, well, what do you want? What's important to you? What are the things that are driving you first and foremost? And then let's work around and let's make the technology achieve those goals. Right. And let's keep you first and foremost in our minds as opposed to saying, well, the technology does this. So we're going to make you bend to the technology as well. It's like, no, this is the reverse. And that's why I would agree with you with the iPod, excuse me, iPod as being so influential in changing our mindsets and changing our orientation even. So looking up and out to now being down and closed in and like focused on this individual device that is giving me this constant feedback loop that uh, what I want is, you know, kind of the most important. And I know a lot of people would get upset and say, well, maybe that's not the best for society. It's like, well, I could ar- understand that argument, but that is truer to the human nature. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. And so in a sense, you're going like, well, but that's I mean, that it, it, if it was such a bad idea, then why is everybody kind of doing that kind of thing? So uh, you have to kind of meet people where they are. Right. Yeah. I think I think it depends on what your goal is. Right. Like. You know, if you're, if you're, if you feel like your life's mission is to cure the world of bad audio, right? Then you're going to constantly <laughs> fight exactly yeah. that wave, yep. right? Um, yep. And and look, I, I don't think that's not a noble endeavor. I mean, like I said, from a timing perspective, I'm you know I'm, I'm kind of a, just in a unique spot where I'm close to to 20 years in, right? I remember when I first started, like uh, you know, selling tube TVs, I had to earn my way in right. selling projection flat panel wasn't really <laughs> a thing it was there uh, mm-hmm. it was definitely there but it was incredibly expensive and it was um not nearly as universal as it is today certainly not commoditized right mm-hmm. and um you know likewise with with audio systems i mean it was it was dolby right yep. it was it was surround sound was was extremely prominent um people did listen to stereo but it was very heavily you know, movie focused, right? That mm-hmm. was, that was a, that was a, a very big driver, um, you know, just in the industry when, when I started and, um, and so people wanted to, to, to try to put that in every single room. And, um, the irony of that is that like that language still carries over to today, mm-hmm. um, or I got to surround sound, surround sound, surround sound, <laughs> yeah. but where we've, where we've matriculated because the, the give and take there going back to the fidelity conversation, right. Is to do that properly you have to have an immense amount of fidelity to get to even just get the physical effect, right? You have to build it right. The room has to be right. Um, you know, the, the conditions have to be met in order to achieve that correctly. Right. And so what I think a lot of people are really saying is I kind of want to hear it everywhere. Um, I want to feel like I'm in it. Mm -hmm. Um, and how we within the industry define that for an end user that may not conceptually understand that I think is, is, hypercritical is one of the most important things that we can do to help um, folks that are, you know, buying my stuff from you um, to understand that you kind of need the right tool for the right job these days. Right. And so get mm-hmm. back to what you were talking about, um, paying attention to what's right for you, all of the, being able to weigh all the different variables, both of the construction of the home, the layout of the space, the size, the, the distance, the proximity, what is it you're trying to achieve? Um, there's, there's just so many variables today um, that we didn't deal with either as aptly, um, you know, 20 years ago or didn't even consider because to your point, we kind of made people mold around the technology and mm-hmm. um, there's there's choice now. Right? Yep. There's, there's a yep. lot. So yep. we got to evolve. Yeah, for yeah. sure. For sure. I mean, the, the biggest thing that that I learned from you all right at the start was, you know, um, like surround sound versus that distributed audio zone, right? The, the, uh, you know, at the time we had just gotten a demo of your band pass 
subwoofer system, you know, mm-hmm. the, and that blew my mind because, you know, for years I'd been going into rooms that are, right, we'll put two speakers in here. That That's good. Right. But I didn't ask the client, like, how do you plan on listening to music in here? You know, you're in your kitchen. We spend a lot of, a lot of people here, they entertain a lot. They cook a lot. They spend a lot of time there. They want a better music experience. And I was just throwing two speakers in there and be like, all right, you're good. You can hear it. But then they're never using it because it's either too loud or not loud enough. So by stretching that and putting in two, four, or four, six, eight, whatever it is, the size of their space, and then designing it with the the lighting was just like changed my life forever. And honestly, <laughs> that's why I love distributed audio so much. So well, if if that changed your life, uh, uh, I'd love to I'd love to share with you some new innovation that. Uh, <laughs> we've been toying with oh, um sure. <laughs> so we showed this at uh at cedia this year this okay. was a this was a part of uh the cedia demo presentation we did and i i was fortunate enough um to get to hear this in our office very recently and um got to hear it in a in a live room not in a trade show environment in a fully sheetrocked hard lid yep. controlled mm-hmm. environment that mimics pretty accurately what a living room to open or to kitchen open concept home design looks. It's a, mm-hmm. uh, a new iteration of, um, the studio. So it's, this is something that you've never seen. It's, uh, at the office now, but, okay. um, it's, it's now an integral part of our design studio. Okay. Um, and, uh, it's, it's, we call it the great room and it is, it is every bit of that, right? There's a TV on the wall, fireplace, um, you know, it's outfitted just like you'd see in a, in a normal living room. Um, likewise, there's a full, full kitchen in there. Um, okay. You know, it's, it's actually a, it's actually a GE, um, uh, experience center as well. I was just um, a GE and those folks are awesome. Yeah. Uh, this, th- so, so that great room functions as a GE, uh, experience center. That's awesome. Um, okay. As well as a, a Lutron experience center. So it's completely outfitted with Ketra. There's some tape, there's some, uh, some cans there's uh you know it's fully controlled but it, it operates a, similar to like what you guys are trying to achieve when you bring that vision of, of premium in both spaces together sure um mm-hmm. what we introduced from an audio category was what we started to call immersion okay okay channels so the way that it's manifested in that room is we've got for demonstrative purposes like you know, distributed audio in the ceiling and a couple different varieties that we can toggle. Um, but we also incorporated small and medium size invisible at floor level, right? So you have huh. proper ceiling coverage. Okay. All right. And then in conjunction with that, you've got um, immersion channels effectively completely hidden into the <laughs> wall using, uh, you know, using new IS. Um, Man, when you listen to music and, and what's crazy is again, you know, I've I've only been doing this for twenty years. You guys have been doing this for man, you know, forty, <laughs> 50, yeah. you know, decades and decades, right? Yeah. Um it's rare, especially now, to find yourself in a situation where you get blown away by I didn't even know that existed. I can't believe this was it. I, the last time that happened for me, outside of New Invisible, which was a pretty, pretty darn good massive mm-hmm. step forward. I mean, it's, um, and it, it, it's, it's just such a game changer cause it's the best of both worlds. But prior to that, I would have said the category of landscape audio, right? This idea mm-hmm. that you could put a ton of these little satellites with a couple subs and get that type of like just magic to happen in a space that just disappears no matter where you go it's perfectly balanced and, and just, it just envelops you in, you know, this, this, the cocoon of the ambiance of whatever it is you're trying to achieve. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, this is big. It's, 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 you know, transparently it's something that we're kicking around. I don't know that there's an immense amount of, um, math tied to it just yet. Mm-hmm. Um, well, it's kind of exploratory, but okay. it's, pretty big yeah um dude i listened to metallica um as an example sure um, just, just listen to metallica and played it through a very robust well-covered ceiling system 
And when you engage the, these low immersion channels, there's something about the, 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 the gap between them where you've got it both coming up and down mm-hmm. that you literally hear instrumentation that you do not get otherwise otherwise and it doesn't matter like i mean from a fidelity perspective i mean even the the ceiling system was very robust very very robust Mm -hmm. um it's incredible yeah and it makes perfect sense i mean we've had how many previous guests talk about spatial audio yep i mean it wasn't a theme of the podcast i swear (laughs) actually like full disclosure this was not a plant uh, <laughs> it's one of those things that's crazy, <laughs> but everybody seems to be going that direction where it's like, I'm no longer satisfied with that mono. So what do you do? You go to stereo. Okay. If I'm not satisfied with stereo, where do we go surround? Then you go Dolby Atmos. And so honestly, it makes perfect sense that we're going, you know, to that complete and total spatial audio experience where I'm going to get sound from up, down, left, right. And when you think about it, that's how we live. Yep. We got two ears and you hear everything. That's what sound is, right? Yep. Changes in air pressure. It's yep. stuck in that, you know, in that real space. And so it makes perfect sense. If you're going to accurately produce the sound, you need to bring sound from all those different areas. And so, yeah. like, it's absolutely phenomenal for you to share that concept with us because that makes perfect perfect sense with where everybody's going yeah I, I hope you guys get a chance to to get out there and hear it at some point in the very near future because it's it's game changing i mean it truly is like it's it was like a goosebump moment for me i was like oh man there is something here <laughs> and and what well, and what's interesting is you know spatial is a completely different animal i mean the amount of processing that goes into that and the the ai nature of the the production track depending on what it is you're trying to achieve is that's that's like crazy next level. What we were listening to was just stereo. Stereo mix. It was just <laughs> multi-channel <laughs> stereo, crisscross, so that you could hear it everywhere. And we changed planes and added a dimension. And and you know I think what makes it what I think what makes it cool is at the end of the day, you know, kind of going back to the Sony as Genesis story, right? Like it was the idea here is if you're trying to recreate that high fidelity experience right you're trying to you're trying to get an emotional connection to whatever it is you're listening to or you're trying to set a mood or you're just trying to bop your head and sing along whatever your motivation is right Mm -hmm. what you're trying to recreate is that hi-fi like two channel setup Mm -hmm. and the reality is when you don't have as you guys know the right environment that's correct when you don't have (laughs) right proper (laughs) amplification or you don't mix it correctly or you don't treat the space which to be fair is is a lot to ask for somebody to put in their home especially in a common living space mm-hmm. you're inevitably going to find yourself underwhelmed because you can't recreate all of it and it's not just range like it's not just well if i can hit this db level at this frequency and yep. this frequency mm-hmm. well then it's going to be awesome cuz talking about kitchens right yep you know said everybody around here and i assume what you meant when you said everybody around here was planet earth because like that's how yeah. everybody <laughs> operates in a kitchen right? nobody stands sure. sure. in the kitchen or lays down on the kitchen island and looks <laughs> up at the ceiling and you know seeks that that deep stereo image it's it's more um how can i reproduce what i know that if i had the time to sit and listen and do that i could achieve but i don't because society's crazy fast right and so if i can try to recreate that in a way that's not inundating to the space doesn't take away and compete with the design of what you know i put together but could still deliver that and and make me you know get that warm and fuzzy musical hug right that i'm looking for um (laughs) the warm and fuzzy yeah that's that's what we're trying to that's what we're trying to achieve and so um I, I, you know, kind of put a button on the on the Sonance piece too, man. Like from a cultural piece, like that's that's the the types of things that the folks that are driving, you know, this stuff forward. For, at least for us, like that's where those heads are at. Is it's we want to continue to find ways to recreate that for somebody in places where you just it's just not physically possible or historically hasn't been possible. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, and I think I want to take two seconds and just call out a couple of uh, baseball card stats regarding uh, the brand, because if you're not familiar with Sonance, you guys have um, in-wall speakers, in-ceiling speakers, in-wall subwoofers, in-ceiling subwoofers. Uh, you touched briefly on landscape audio, so this would be speakers for the outside. Um, you've got the invisible line of speakers that are true invisibles, and I want to ask you more specifically about those in just a second. Second, um, But, I mean, all of these different options, right, just to kind of lay it out there, means that you are able to get sound in a place that you couldn't have it before, so I'm understanding wh- where you're going with that. But it means that I do have to do a little bit of work to get there. Right. And so I do have to have that initial conversation to figure out, Okay, well, like, what's your lifestyle? Like, are you going to be cooking in the kitchen? And that's where the kids are going to be and all that kind of stuff. And is that an open concept or is it totally separate? And I think those early conversations need to happen with a designer so that way you can put that stuff together and make sure that you're picking the right parts and pieces to achieve that that overall goal. Am I tracking? Yeah, I, 100 percent. I I think I think the mistake that gets made more often than not from folks coming from our perspective that either have some tenure in the industry or, you know, fell in love with with what it is that we do. And just, you know, we, we love this stuff and we're, we're geeked out by it and we want you know, it's it's consuming for us because it's it's a job, but it's also a hobby. That that's not uncommon in in the industry, right? Yeah, everyone's I mean, passionate. I don't care <laughs> if what, you're going to make it yeah. long. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it doesn't matter what your paycheck says, where it came from, right? I mean, guys that have been doing this for a long time love this stuff, and I think it makes it a little tougher to remember what you started this this uh, this conversation with was we got to understand how you know. What is what is the end user trying to achieve? And I and I think the mistake gets made is we try to say, give me one f- factoid and detail about the music you listen to or the the frequency you're in this room, you know, on on this certain day, and then I'm going to try to to build that out. And what you really need to understand is how they live the day. Right? How do you spend your what time do you get up every morning? Right? When you leave you know, the bedroom or you leave the bathroom, whatever, and you go to the kitchen, you know, what's the path you take? You, you walk the same path every day, right? You lived in this house for a little while. You, you got a rhythm. Walk me through that, right? Walk me through, you know, what does Christmas morning look like? What does Thanksgiving look like? What does the 4th of July look like, right? How many people are here, you know, in the backyard while you're, you know, cooking out or whatever? Like to truly understand somebody's lifestyle is the only way that, you can build this system properly for them and, 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 and allocate the right stuff um, and make it make sense. Because inevitably, if we take the lessons that we've learned from coverage, indoor, outdoor, talked about ceiling coverage, then you start layering in things like, hey, by the way, if we do immersion channels, like it doesn't have to be processed anymore complexly. The functionality is going to be just as easy. But check out what this is going to do for you too, because you're Mm -hmm. trying to recreate that. And I know that because you do have a listening room somewhere else. You know, if that's, if that's their proclivity, there's, it doesn't make sense to try to shoehorn that into the kitchen or a bathroom or, you know, even, even an open concept living room, right. Um, Where the limitations of the structure are going to, are going to hamper us. And so if I can understand that, you know, this is what you're trying to achieve and you want to feel, let me say it again, that, little, that warm hug, oh, the music, the music <laughs> hug, right? You want to, you want to be enveloped in, in that, uh, just, just bubble of, of, you know, ambiance that you're trying to create. Like we can do that. Um, you can have that to the degree that you want it is completely up to you and what you want to spend for it. Um, but I think it, it has to start with the focus on their life and and the the product is simply a vehicle to have conversation with you can plug and play whatever you want to plug and play down the line you can justify this brand that brand this size that size this budget that all of that stuff is is relative it's material it's mm-hmm. relative but at the end of the day none of it matters and none of it will be overwhelming if we don't understand first what does the flow of life look like? And we, you know, to again to your point, 
find a way to make that adapt around it. And that's what makes the catalog and, you know, between not just the stuff that we have in this, but even the other brands that we, you know, that make up the, the Sonance portfolio, like that's what makes it special is that we've got so many options to put stuff in places it doesn't belong to attempt to recreate that for you regardless of the limitations that you have, right? We mm -hmm. feel like we're going to get closer than anybody else out there with the myriad of different things we've got just because we're we're thinking that way. Yep. If that makes mm -hmm. sense. It does. It does. Um, we want to, I know you want, you brought up Invisible earlier, like um, just so everyone's aware, when it, we say Invisible, it's not actually invisible like it's not a tangible item but once it's installed it's designed to disappear into the space and i'll tell you this i got to hear you know four or five years ago the old invisible and you know compared to the new stuff the new stuff um it is amazing it, i would agree <laughs> with, with you said earlier like it, it, it it's almost like a uh not a cultural shift but just a shift and again the way that you think like the first time that I got to talk with you about it, we were talking about like, okay, we're putting it in a space, right? And maybe, you know, looking at this wall here, we can't, in a traditional stereo setup, we can't aesthetically line up the exact left and exact right together. Now with these invisible speakers, we get them put in. I don't have to worry about the exact placement of it because with DSP and other things, I can make these speakers sound good, even if they're not exactly, you know, there's not a triangle created to create that perfect space. Yeah. It's it does, what you're describing is just, it's, it goes back to those levels of variable, right? Yep. What, mm -hmm. what is it that somebody wants? So I think, you know, if we were going to, if we were going to try to design the perfect system for somebody's space, right? I think inevitably what it's going to look like at its most pure form is you know, I understand that this is a two story house that's open to above and, you know, there's a landing up there in this living room and it's, you know, glass on one side. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to install, you know, a cloud ceiling of acoustic treatment to bring the audible floor down to 12 feet, right? Something more controllable. And then we're going to, you know, use window treatments and wall treatments in order to create yeah minimize this, reflection yeah, we're minimize all the just, reflection we're gonna you know <laughs> try to eliminate any you know um standing wave that might happen um mm -hmm. you know we'll put bass traps in that way we've got constant flow we've created even <laughs> pressure um and we've turned your house right? into a recording studio that's yep. it right? like that's that's the apex um and then we're gonna you know further you know connection install um xyz product yep. that's going to deliver on that experience, mm -hmm. right? How's that sound? And then, you know, it's highly yeah. realistic, right? So what's the first thing to get cut? Well, you can't make my room look like that. Okay. <laughs> um, that becomes a variable <laughs> that we have to solve for, right? Yeah. And yep. so as we layer on both, you know, speaker technology limitations, I mean, I, a, a classic example of that is, you know, you mentioned, you talked about asymmetrical or we're, we're kind of hinting around that asymmetrical yeah, uh, yeah. flexibility for something like invisible, right? Part of that fundamentally is that the driver's flat, like physically mm -hmm. flat, right? Versus a conic right. um, driver, whether it's a, a concave or, or convex, um, the laws of physics will force us to have an axis because of the shape. It's inevitable. Sure. Um, and you see that not just in cone and dome speakers you see it in um you know curved electrostatic right which you know it's phenomenal and it's designed to eliminate all those variables and focus that sound regardless of the environment i mean that's the whole that's the whole genesis, move yeah. right mm -hmm. that's the whole move to the curved panel right um which is brilliant like brilliant um for that for that listening environment right um and so when you're trying to hyper focus into one spot you know that's that is the um that's the apex right is is whether it's cone or dome, it's determining the angle, it's lining it up, it's honing it in. And then we use, um, you know, amplification or, or preamplification, right, to adjust frequencies to account for, you know, as many of those variables as we can get. Mm -hmm. But that's historically been the, like the industry limitation. Um, when you introduce a, a flat driver, um, 
it has legitimate audible DB at 170 degrees, mm-hmm. right in the in the face of the speaker, which is astronomically higher, right than anything that's conic, right? J- based on f- just, just the physics, straight, straight, straight physics, physics yeah. right? And you can market it to to the nth degree, um, a cone or dome, but at the end of the day, for actual audible DB without distortion. Most of those speakers are, you know, in the the low 100s in terms of dispersion. Mm -hmm. Um, There's ways that you can diffuse to to get it. We have, you know, we we also showed, you know, this year at CD, as you guys know, it's coming out. We've got new visual experience that's replacing visual performance. Um, Mm -hmm. And in that product, there's uh, a a pretty intricate waveguide that's, again, designed to try to create that expansion and and look it does a significantly better job um you know it's 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 incredible product um but it's never going to be it's not flat yeah (laughs) no matter how how, yep right it doesn't it doesn't matter because again we're limited uh, you know limited by the, the laws of physics and so that in itself is is special about that product not the least of which you know once it's done um and fully installed and and you know mudded and painted and it's got a you know just a hair of resistance on top of that diaphragm that kind of tightens it up i mean the the frequency response that you get off of those is it, it's incredible mm-hmm. it's truly incredible um and what we're starting to see is um you know more and more of that becoming more prominent in terms of customers asking right and, and end yep. users Absolutely. seeking that solution yep. because you get the best of both worlds, right? I don't have to compromise my design, but I can also get pretty solid output and pretty high fidelity from something that looks like nothing. Yep. And that's, yep. you know, this is, this old, you know, I, I said it three years ago, right? When we brought them around and I told you guys, I said, get ready. Cause like this will become, you know, a, a, a massive force in the industry. And like, you're starting to see it now with uh, mm-hmm. you know, some other folks that are starting to bring more of that to market now. Yeah. Yep. And I was going to say, that's the other thing that I've found so amazing is we have folks that will come in asking specifically for invisible, which is kind of mind blowing that it's gotten to that point because I don't think I've ever seen someone walk into a store and say, Hey, I want a, uh, you know, X ex- expensive speaker. Like that just doesn't happen. You always have to sort of talk someone. They'll walk in and say, I want the biggest TV you can get, or I want a projector system, or I want mm-hmm. it. And the audio from a customer's perspective has always been secondary or not thought of or not part of that initial draw. And so, you know, it, it, from a, you know, from that perspective to say that's totally flip flopped, the f- customer comes in and says, yeah, I've already got a TV. Like, I don't care. It's done. It's like three or four years old. That's cool. But I would love to drop seven, ten, fifteen thousand dollars on invisible speakers to get them installed and done the right way. And you look at them and say, like, you know, we're gonna have to, you know, patch and paint and you know, you need to get a good drywaller and like and there's in a sense like all of these what used to be roadblocks are now people saying go, oh no, like whatever. It's cool, man. Like I've got a drywall guy, I've got a paint guy. You're we're working with the contractor now in most cases to plan for those follow up visits and to do those things where it's taken time. There's no way, like you can't do it at the beginning. I get that mm-hmm. a lot. It probably took a ton of inertia to get that ball rolling. <laughs> like I can't even imagine the amount of work that you guys have had to put in in order to get to that place. Mm-hmm. Uh, but there's uh, a saying on <laughs> the look on your face yep. was, uh, yeah, maybe let's not go too deep into that part of it. <laughs> uh, but what, how, <laughs> All right, I'm going to quote uh, Pitch and Rides. Uh, he says uh, all the time. It's one of my favorite shows, and I'm sorry if you got, if you haven't seen it. I highly recommend it. It's really awesome. This guy makes co- crazy cool custom cars, and uh, his his saying is that if it was cool, then everyone would do it. But if everyone did it, it it's wouldn't be cool. cool anymore. Yeah, right. You're right. And so it's like this moment where you go, well, yeah, only the select few who want to do it right and really do it right, you know, are going to be able to to pull that off. And then for you guys to then take that concept and be able to open that up to even more, more folks is just unbelievably awesome. Unbelievably yeah, awesome. It, uh, it was a lot of heavy lifting. Yep. Uh, I, I can't stress that enough. But, but, you know, the irony is you talk about the relationships that people have with like a contractor and all that. All that has always been there, right? It, the, 
the the irony is is it's having the the confidence and the stuff to perform at the level so that when you make the claim this is going to be awesome that you don't feel like you're left holding the bag and I mean I you know I would tell you just from an industry perspective the concept's always been super cool right and it's not new they started to this technology began its its innovation and, and, and attempt in 1969 yeah right mm-hmm. um and came to fruition and really went to mass market um, early 2000s, um, you know, and and was even then cool. Um, we sold a decent amount of the previous generation, right? Right, um, but it was always niche, and it required specialty amplification, and it required, um, you know there were limitations that required you know the the end user to know like this can't be for a theater like it will not make it right volume. Like, <laughs> and so there's all you know you talk about roadblocks there it, it's all it's both ways right? right um so i think that's been flushed out it's been flushed out pretty well in your space right um the larger mm-hmm. industry um you know just just in the in the ci space is um has really gravitated toward it mm-hmm. um you talked about discrete opening earlier, you know what I mean? Like small, tiny speakers and a bandpass sub to augment, right. To, to supplement Mm -hmm. where necessary. And the reality is, is that was even more, a little bit more complex. You needed extra amplification channels. You had to cover, you're dealing with conic speakers. You had to cover, you had to do more Mm -hmm. of them. Now you can achieve range comparable in some cases better. Um, you can do it depending on the size of the space, potentially with less holes. Doesn't, negate the need for coverage you still you that's there's there's a physical element to that um sure which you guys mm-hmm. really want to get down that path we could do in a minute <laughs> um talk about dining rooms specifically um mm-hmm. you know where where what's the appropriate number even though people are seated i can get into that for you if you want it but um well I, so i'll tell you a quick story yeah i walked a house and a uh, very lovely lady uh, talks to me about doing uh, some sound, and she doesn't want to do anything elaborate. Uh, it's not a big budget project, so we'll just disclaimer it. She's looking at Sonos throughout the space, right? And we did a couple of different things, and we did end up using some invisible speakers for her. But in the dining room, uh, she had fixated on this idea of a play one in one corner and then talked herself out. of. I didn't say anything. I didn't even mention the dining room. She says, but that's going to be really weird if I only have one over here. So I'm going to need a second one on the other side. So that way one person isn't being blasted with all of the sound. It's like, and so it's, it's this intuitive idea, no matter what scale you're talking about. Like, I think people understand you need coverage to be evenly distributed. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't think it's it's a too far of a concept for most folks. <laughs> I'm going to pull that, thread. I'll pull that thread for you a little further. Right. Same concept when you're seated. Right. Same concept in the kitchen. If I have four people sitting at a rectangular table, right, four sided object, I can't aptly cover with both left and right with just two. It's it's again, physically impossible, physically impossible. Right. So can I still get sound in there? Yes. Inevitably, somebody around that table will be seated under one of them, right? Which means mm-hmm. they're blasted. Well, they're they're blasted or not, they're going to be dominated by one half of that experience, right? So mm-hmm. they're either going to get the left side or they're going to get the right side. And then there will also be people who are comfortably in the middle that have great experience mm-hmm. because they're getting both. Um, but they're... It's it's not as consistent as it could or should be, right? You take that example into to a kitchen, the heart of the house. Everybody spends time there. Every kitchen, um, in in at least current Western culture, right, is is built around the triangle, right? The the, the kitchen triangle. So um, as you move between the big three appliances, or, or the two big, you know, the 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 refrigerator, the oven or range. And the sink, and the sink yep. right? As you move around that space, you can't physically encompass a three-sided object with two points, right? You need a minimum of four to ensure that as somebody moves throughout that space, you get the end result of of that, um, you know, comprehensive and balanced coverage. So it's not overwhelming anywhere. Mm-hmm. And then you extrapolate that into 
you know, longer space or a breakfast area or what have you, um, not to mention the transitional space between the kitchen and the living room, if they share the same ceiling. And I mean, now all of a sudden it's not unfathomable to put six, eight, 10, right. In, in just that space in the transition space. And, um, going back to, you know, having somebody walk you through a day, right. If you can say, cool. So at no point during your day to day, right. Even your morning routine at no point were you ever static, right? Because you went from this task to this task to this task or from this task to this event to whatever, um, you constantly move through. Wouldn't you want that to follow you around and be the same, right? If I sit over here to drink my morning coffee, but my sound is over here, like, do you want it to be that dissonant or do you want the exact same experience, right? And, um, you know, that's that's kind of I mean that's that's the secret sauce to the whole thing is is understanding how somebody moves through it and it helps connect the dots for them like I said too because um, I don't think the concept's foreign but I think it's not common yet mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and consumers right just like we get out of this space when we go buy anything we tend to buy what we've seen other people buy mm -hmm. right or what we think is the right thing if we're not super educated depending on what the category is and that's where you know it's it's incumbent upon us to to do the best job we can do trying to paint that picture for them right mm -hmm. um and it's not always easy to demonstrate it's it's hard right when the the spaces that we use traditionally just they're not set up for that um ironically um in in a lot of places man i mean it's, that's not unique to any any one it's it's something that as an industry we we have to be better at. And, um, so finding ways to, to accomplish that is important. Um, you guys finding new ways, us finding new ways to help describe it to somebody, or at least be able to make those connections is, um, is super important. Yeah. Mm -hmm. forward, right. Well, and I think part of that, uh, that conversation of work with your designer, work with your integrator, have those conversations, let them walk you through that space. We've said it probably a, a million times and, you know, we will sound like a broken record, which is that that relationship and getting to know who that person is and really getting their vision into what that space is, but doing so in a way that they didn't necessarily know was possible. And I'll share a car buying experience because I bought a Volkswagen diesel. I know this sounds crazy, but the sales guy that I talked to at the time was like, listen, man, these are the things that are actually important to you. You don't realize that these are the things that are important to you. But he went that next step. It was just one. It wasn't like he had to go that far. I told him what I was looking for. And he goes, no, 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 you don't understand. As soon as you do this, that will happen. And now your new need is this. And when that happens, you're going to want that solution right there. And I go, oh, yeah, no, I'm tracking now. I get it. And honestly, I'm the biggest fan of that car. I've had three of them. I won't do anything else because it solves all the things that I actually had. And it's one of those things I have to admit, like I wasn't the smartest guy in the room. I like to be the smartest guy in the room. And I'm not always right. And most of the time I'm not. So I have to admit like, oh, no, this other dude had the right solution for me. And to be to for him to have the courage to say something, mm -hmm. to just be like, hey, I, I realize it's not exactly what you think you asked for, but it really is the thing that you asked for. And I really want to do the right thing by you. And that might be a little bit different than what you had in mind. But in the end, you're going to go, oh, that was awesome to your point. Right. Mm -hmm. Like I got that warm blanket. I got that, you know, amazing, amazing sound. I got that experience that was that was so truly unique. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I mean, when I bought my truck, that it was kind of like, hey, I want a truck. Uh, you know, I travel a lot, so I want leather seats. So I want these things. But and, and you know, it was a New Year's Eve type thing. So they're like, <laughs> okay, well, we'll just sell you a truck. But like hearing this, I'm like, you know, once I got in the truck and I had it for a few months, it's like, you know, I'm glad I got the leather seats. But really, I, I didn't need them. Like they could have told me like. Oh, hey, this is what I'd recommend because now I've worn out some of that leather getting in and out of my truck so much. Whereas the cloth that was actually in there was really nice and probably actually, would have served. It, it would have been just fine. So, um, yeah, I mean, that yeah. now I need to sell my truck and go buy it somewhere else. Yeah. <laughs> no. Um, no, I mean, 
just to kind of wrap up Invisibles, like, you know, the, the original set, you brought it up. I'm glad you did. Like, you, if we as sales folks tried to sell them outside of stereo, like try to do some sort of surround option, you guys would say, we're denying your, like, we'll cancel the old stuff. On the old stuff. On the old stuff. On the old stuff. Now you have a dedicated theater. At, well, you did when I was there. Yeah, well, it, not dedicated theater, but a you know, it could an, be it could be a surround. It, 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 it's right. just got to be small, right? So again, sure, sure, sure. It's I a mean, variable conversation, yeah, right? And so, so if it's a you know a smaller surround type space, or you know, I, I have actually done it in some smaller open concepts too, but you know that that uh, really kind of changed the game. And you know, three years ago when you told me about it, and I sold my first pair, you know, the, the client went through a couple of different folks that were helping us finish them out uh now i just finished that project that i started well over two years ago that had you know 20 something invisibles and the drywaller came in and said oh yeah we're doing these all the time so now he's my new point of contact anytime that i need to finish them out so i I built a relationship with a new contractor just over your your product which is unbelievable yeah in three (laughs) in, in three years you know and there's it just that's not something that at least I've experienced a lot in our industry in the 15 years I've been in it. So yeah. uh, the, the button I would put on this from a product perspective, right? Mm-hmm. Is we've kind of hit the gamut and, and I didn't coin this. I heard this years ago and I, I wish I could remember who said it to give them the credit, but there is no such thing as a perfect speaker. Sure. Mm-hmm. If there was, you would sell one. Yep. Right. Every single one of them is going to um, require some sort of compromise, whether it's a size issue, whether it's a cost issue, whether it's, again, the, the limitations of physics, right? Like I can go find the biggest, baddest, you know, most esoteric tower that's ever been made and put two of those in a room and they will be, you know, get, they'll deliver a religious experience in the sweet spot but it won't help me if I'm walking around my kitchen. You know what I mean? Like, right. And so that's that's where, you know, our jobs in the industry really come into play to understand how each of these pieces fit and what the most appropriate choice for each of the different unique needs are um, to truly deliver a custom experience. Man, at its root, that is the, the definition. definition of it, right? Yeah. Yep. For sure, for sure. Um, well, anyway, you want to uh, tell us a little bit, kind of like what what you like to do, Ryan? I know we've been talking a lot for the past <laughs> hour uh, about you know we've got pretty deep in some things, but we didn't really talk about like you and what you like to do. Man, I uh, I, mean, I I spend the vast majority of my time when I am not actively engaged in working, um, which is. A lot of time. Oh, huh? <laughs> yeah, it's most of it. Um, no, nah, man, I you know I got a I got a couple kids that uh, are are incredibly active in mm-hmm. um, you know everything that they do. So um, I spend a, a, a pretty solid amount of my weekends, um, you know, at different sporting fields or courts, um, indoor, outdoor, um, <laughs> sometimes pools, um, depending on the season. Um, you know, running around, um, you know, trying to, uh, just try to get them to where they, where need they to need be. to be. Sure. Um, and fortunately, um, you know, I'm, I'm well supported when I'm not home, um, uh, with, uh, with a wife that gets, uh, gets a lot of that handled too. So, mm-hmm. um, I do get to have a lot of fun, um, playing with toys and listening to music and getting paid to do it. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, you know, it's not possible without, uh, you know, without that, that support, um, as well. But, uh, but now, man, I mean, I, there's not a lot of places I'd rather be, uh, you know, on a, on a weekend than, you know, at a baseball park somewhere, or, mm-hmm. um, you know, at a swim meet or, you know, at a watch and cheer or, mm-hmm. um, yeah. football game or basketball game, whatever, you know, whatever they're into. Um, so I don't do a lot of dedicated listening anymore. Sure. Um, mm-hmm. That's probably that, shifted. That, that, that made it. Well, you know, it's interesting, man, because I think like even the stuff that we do, it's like it's seasonal, right? Like, it's, this is the season of life right. that, that I'm currently mm-hmm. in. It doesn't mean that I wouldn't go back. I still have, 
Um, yeah, from from having done this and sold so many different brands over the years, I mean, I've, I've picked up a, a, an okay collection of stuff and pared it down to the stuff that I can continue to have some some room for. Yep. Um, you know, but but for this season, um, actually, there's not there's not a lot of time for that, right? And so, um, all the more reason that. I think, uh, you know, talking about immersion, that it hit me so hard. I was like, oh, man, I could get back to yep. like, really listening. <laughs> like, I could, I, I could put this in places because um, I'm never going to sit and listen to an album again. Um, you know, that it's, it's probably been seven years since I had the time to do that. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, mm-hmm. um, but it but it is fun. Like, I, I do I do enjoy that. It's, it's exhausting, but uh, it's really fun to watch um, those clowns turn into little, like, you know, little hopefully – hopefully hopefully contributing members of society oh they they will be. they will be listen i got four i'm tracking man yeah. we're yeah. We, we hit a soccer field uh on saturday uh, mornings and like we're we're running all over town and there's dance and there's all the things and i'm with you a thousand percent it's like you don't realize that's where a lot of your heart's gonna be and then your heart just becomes bigger you know yeah. uh I, I i fully look at uh you know the grinch we're in holiday time. We just watched it the other day. So yeah. I'm, I'm if it sounds like I just saw that uh, heart size get bigger, that's exactly yeah. the what it, what happened right there. So yeah. yeah, well, my dogs and horses, you know, I'm not quite there yet for kids, but I still I still understand what you'll you're get saying, there. You know, I mean? yeah, you'll get there. We're, we're, that's good. Um, now I will say this: like you, you know, you talked about working. I have called this man multiple vacations. I feel like every time I've called you. Recently, you've been out of town or something. He picks up the phone, and it's just like we're sitting next to each other. He has a quick conversation, says, hey, I'm out of town. I'm like, hey, let me let you go. He's like, no, man, we're going to get you taken care of right away. And, like, personally, that that's what's that's huge for me because, you know, there's not a lot of other folks, no disparaging of any of our other friends, uh, that I can't, you know, that I don't call and they pick up immediately. And that's, you know, that's a, just something I wanted to bring up. Like, it's – more than appreciated so and i hopefully you see that and no, what you get out of that. a thousand percent man you guys great great support for that um i'll reiterate what i tell you every single time that that happens and you say that like i take a i do not take a lot. no 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 no, no. <laughs> it's just it's just uh you've taught timing. me so much i don't need to call you every other day that's no, it. that's all it on, it that's on. all it is it really is no awesome. um no but you know I'll, I'll reiterate the same thing man like i, I wouldn't have picked up if I wasn't prepared for sure. whatever was coming, right? Like, yep. you know, if I picked it up, you know, I've got it. And if not, you know, we're usually good about getting back. But yep. I had people that supported me, um, you know, a handful, right, over the over the years in, in that way. And, um, you know, I don't think you're being a good steward, whether it's, you know, whether it's the, the audio portion of this, whether it's, a, you know, the, the sales aspect of what we do. I mean, there, you know, there's a little bit of both. And, mm-hmm. um, but I, I think... To, to be a good steward of either of those um, responsibilities. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like you, I think you, you got to pay that forward. You know what I mean? And so, um, again, I, I was fortunate and I had support there. And um, so the, the ability to be able to give that, you know, to, to, to somebody else and know that um, it's going to, to the right place for somebody that's going, yeah, absolutely, man. I mean, that's, it's it's a it's not even a thought you know it's yeah. it's just it's reflex man it's it's there so well, well uh, I'll second that because uh, I also have had my own fair share of conversations with Ryan uh, that have gone way longer than they probably should have so yep. uh, in all seriousness uh, it speaks not just to the character of you as an individual which is obviously the highest but also what Sonance means as a company and I can't tell you enough. That we see that and when we go to make a recommendation, we go to put a design together, it's like, yeah, you know, we shouldn't be influenced by those things. But at the same time, we need to be influenced by the right things. Mm -hmm. And that's what you guys are doing, which is why we can sell or design or put together or recommend or whatever word you want to use with confidence. Right. That thousand percent, because you look at it and go, yeah, if there's an issue, we know that we're okay. And so I don't have to think about it. The customer doesn't have to think about it. Client doesn't have to worry about it. I don't know how many times I heard lifetime warranty come out of a Sonance representative's mouth, <laughs> like on so many products, including, you know, uh, and I won't, I, I'm not going to make any warranty claims. Don't worry. 
But yeah. just to say, like, you know, I, I I get it. Like, that's such an amazing ability uh, for you guys to to make those uh, those statements. It means, yeah, we we actually believe in what, what it is that we're doing, and it's so awesome uh, because there's. Uh, in the technology world, that's not always the case, you know, so yep. it's uh, it's definitely appreciated. All right. We've asked everybody about demos. So I have to ask you. Love it. Do you I'm have. Really looking forward to this. <laughs> this, is the, this is the one. The right? demo question. So what are your demos and uh, what do you like to use um, when uh, showing off a system? I was finally going to get to the point where we learned that we were having an audio podcast with yeah. at least <laughs> uh, traditional old school uh, audio dude I'm gonna tell you I I gotta share the perspective with you um, I could rattle off dozens or hundreds of tracks that I've gravitated to the one the the track that made me the most successful I probably owe a half a million dollars worth of royalty to Buble was feeling good. There you go. Yeah, yep. That was a game. Ch- I man, I I put more speakers <clears throat> in more places with that track than anything else. And and I couldn't tell you the last time that I demoed it, but like that particular one. Um, but categorically speaking, I tend to play whatever. Not not specifically what it is that a customer wants to listen to. Depending on the system, there's a handful of different control tracks just to kind of help yep. somebody understand. Like, if you do it all right, like this is what it's capable of. But the harsh reality is, as everything we've discussed industry wise today, the vast majority of people don't subscribe to high resolution streaming. They, you know, they're they're streaming free stuff. They're using their Prime account, their YouTube. Right? Yeah, they're trying mm-hmm. to find ways again to take what it is they're trying to do and put it in technology. And I think it's equally as important when you go down that path, regardless of the environment, regardless of the product, you got to be able to show it the way that it's going to show up for them or it's disingenuous. Yep. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, if if I play a bunch of tracks that nobody's ever heard of that sound really good on my stuff and I, I then deliver that experience in their house and they turn around and are listening to you know a streaming FM radio station to get the vast majority of their content. <laughs> yep. The first thing I'm going to get is a phone call going, "Why isn't this loud enough?" Right. And then we get into a voltage conversation or you know source or whatever it is. And right? Yeah. Yep. It's it's. I, I think if I've evolved in my time and tenure in the in the industry, um, it's not that I don't continue to have um, that bone in my body per se right um you know, listen to you know keith don't go right on a, on sure. a nice you know nice two channel setup sure right i mean i'm this i'm reaching for some you know some some tracks that were old when i heard them the first time years and years and years ago um listen man manham steamroller like you go <laughs> yeah. right um yeah i'm a i'm a fan of toto um, uh, dude okay. that's a, there you go that's, okay it's kind of a uh, a, a, a staple for some of the stuff we do. Um, but again, I, yeah, I think it's, I, I try to listen to things that I like to listen to. Um, I, I fall into the majority, um, the, the 95, not the 5% of people that really stop actively listening to new music after I turn 30. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, like I still hold on hard to the stuff that I, that I grew up on. Um, and I always want to know what that sounds like on any system. You mm-hmm. know, I'm like, Oh, this, you know, this crazy track's cool. And like, maybe I'll Shazam it and figure out who it is so I can listen to it later, but I probably won't with any frequency. Um, but what I really, really want to know is, um, like how's bone thugs going to sound on this? Mm-hmm. Right? Like, or, you know, whatever. Right. Um, and, and, you know, I, I think from a, from a, a Sonyans perspective too, like, I think it's very real, right. Um, you know, the last um, large event uh, uh, summit that you guys had a chance to participate in, um, you know, professionals coming. That was we used we used one of those tracks. Right? Yep, absolutely. Um, you did. But it's real. 
right? right? Mm-hmm. It's tangible. It's there's, you know, whether or not there's if you if you haven't sat in a basement and taken LSD and listened to Dark Side of the Moon like in the most formidable years of your youth, like no matter how many times you listen to to that or you know even a track that's as, as moving as like Wish You Were Here, that was another one. I mean, I, I played a ton, right? And uh, if you didn't live that, like there's it's difficult to find that emotional attachment right so a thousand percent you, you got you gotta you kind of gotta meet the level of of the audience to to get the right track and, and make it make sense not to mention um you know, people are gonna it, that it's all gonna change right their mm-hmm. their taste is gonna change new stuff's gonna come out so you may love the way this track sounds but if you can't again find that balance that compromise for what what it, I'm going to give up something whether it's you know because of budget or size or space or allocate whatever and my music taste might evolve a little bit um, you got four kids man there was a period of time where you know you're you're probably still in it to a degree um, where you listen to some Disney man I mean there would you know oh dude the amount of let it go that I have heard in my dude, life <laughs> dude I'm telling you man like that you know that that uh that particular period of life was um, very repetitive um, over and over and over again. And so, and listen, no, Alan Menken music is absolutely phenomenal. <laughs> like, I got no like, issues. Like you need a like, disclaimer. Like, right? I, yep. But that being said, I mean, you know, thank God that Disney had uh, and has had for many years excellent production quality because if it was an annoying song uh, that was recorded poorly i think i would have lost it man yep. yeah <laughs> yep. yeah so, um, thank goodness it sounded good <laughs> yeah for, for for sure um that's a huge plus um that does make it more tolerable yeah um yep. but you can only let it go for so long yeah right? well done sir well done well yep. done i mean do you want to build a snowman yeah. <laughs> or do you talk about Bruno? I think that's the, the newer one, right? We, we, don't. Um, <laughs> we don't. Um yeah, I, I you know, that's again, that's yeah. a, that is a seasonality yeah. thing. That's a, yep. another one, so. Yeah. Yep. Well, go ahead. No, that, that was it. I was just going to I mean, he was I, pulling more Disney references. Yeah, oh, that's that's gonna, it's gonna, <laughs> good. I could go I could go all day. I was, was, was going to comment on uh, the demo concept that you're talking about because um i had a client come in and he wanted to listen to a set of uh, bookshelf speakers and uh we met at one store we went to another and you know long you know lots of conversation probably spent you know three four hours tons and tons and tons of time and uh you know every single thing that we listened to came off his phone bluetooth Right. And mm-hmm. and as an audio guy, you know, Bluetooth is compressed and it's this and it's that. And like it's a it's a necessary evil. It's a convenience. Right. And mm-hmm. so you sort of look at that again, going back to your compromise. It's like, well, we got to deal with what we got to deal with. And that's OK. Um, but at the end of the day, that was every single track that we listened to was like that because he goes, this is how I'm going to listen to it at home. So I want to make sure that what I'm hearing is actually there. And believe it or not, but the better speakers won. Right. In his own mind, like these are the things that everything and I agreed with him. I was like, actually, no, that's that's what everything sounds better on. And that's Mm -hmm. what's going to sound better in your space and in your room and in your setup. And so uh, a thousand percent. It is, of course, like we always have to go with what's actually going to be done. It's Mm -hmm. it's anything subjective. Yep. And trying to argue with somebody over which one sounds better is like trying to win the argument over whose favorite color is the best. I mean, it, you know, it's, it's a, it's, it's a losing um, battle on both sides just because it's, it's to each their own. Yeah. Um, I've, I've done, <laughs> I did a custom um, DSP setup for somebody who didn't even, uh, they truthfully, they bought competitive product, um, but their living room was akin to one of those, you know, disasters sure. that we mm-hmm. described earlier, right? Two stories open to above, slate floor, glass on one side, open to the kitchen, open to a foyer. Um, you know, arguably worst acoustic environment on planet Earth, if possible. Like if you were to draw what room's gonna suck for sound, this That's it. would have mm-hmm. been it, right? And uh, you know, invested in a system that heard in a store with selected content, puts it in his house. It doesn't sound right. And so I get a call. Um, hey, sorry, 
wish I'd have sold more of your stuff. I didn't, but I need you to bail me out. It's cool. Leave the speakers. If the guy likes the speakers, leave them. Obviously, there was something there. She's one of our amps, and um, I'll come out, and we'll, we'll tweak it a little bit. And so we start playing with the EQ a little, um, got it dialed. Um, and I would tell you candidly, when I finished, it um, took about 10, 15 minutes. wasn't anything crazy. Just made some very basic adjustments. And um, by the time it was done, the, the homeowner was, ah, oh, this is exactly how it sounded in the store. It's the best thing ever. <laughs> and and I, I would tell you personally, uh, I don't know that I have ever um, ruined uh, the way a room sounded, in my personal opinion, any harder than that because it was – Inaudible, as far as I'm concerned, um, un, uh, I, I was uncomfortable mm. listening to it um, because of the, the 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 amount of highs and lows and how we how you did it adjusted mm-hmm. to get it to that point. Um, as soon as he said, he was like, "This is what it was supposed to sound like. This is what I paid for. This is it. This is awesome." Closed my laptop and said, "Great." Packed it up and yeah, we're moving on. I was, to the like, next I was, one. Like, I was like, "Good. <laughs> Have a nice day." Because yep. you know, I can't. I was like, you know can we pause this? Cause it's hurting me. And yeah, it was a great lesson in the moment. Um, you know, how the subjectivity is, is so relevant. Um, well, it, I wouldn't go back. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say it this way too. Like if you take a historical perspective, if you look at the way a cathedral is designed, right, there's a ton of echo. And so I know that there's this concept and we've, we've said it kind of unintentionally, you know, put an acoustic treatment, make it quiet, make it all these things, control all those reflections and, you know, try and, you know, make everything good for this one sweet spot. But if you look historically, it's been the reverse. I want more echo. I want more reverb. I want more of these mm-hmm. things. And if that's what a client thinks is a better sound, then guess what you need to do, right? You need to design with that in mind. I put in a stereo system that uh, was in a giant library. Beautiful. Absolutely fantastic. But the echo was unbelievable. And the question was, well, is that what it should sound like? I said, yeah, but that's what it sounds like in the room. That is what the room sounds like. There's no way to put in a different room. We need to make it sound as good as we can in this space. And when you think about it, that client is going to get a private concert in his library from every single artist that he listens to. Right. He's not going to get someone else's experience. He's not going to get a recording studio experience. He's not going to get this. He's going to get his experience. And that's the most amazing part about it is to say it's like, no, I get what it is that is unique. And again, going back to that word custom, I get that custom experience. I get that unique experience that no one else is going to have. And that it was just absolutely incredible the way that that system turned out, even though on paper, you know, your brain goes, but that's not how it should be. It's like, but why is that? like that why is that rule there well that, that doesn't make any sense anymore like we need to get that old way of thinking out of our brains i think so mm-hmm. sure. yeah i yeah. guess or <laughs> just listen yeah right take everything you've learned and listen to what they say and yeah put it together yeah yeah there you go well uh with that i would like to say uh thank you thank you thank you thank you very much ryan for uh hanging out with us really do appreciate it uh, please like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, ring the bell. Check us out on YouTube. Uh, share with your friends. Uh, if you guys have questions, obviously feel free to reach out to us at uh, thesounddesign.com. And uh, we will see you guys on the next episode. Bye. Bye.